first one was about with the puffs thing. Jill, could you speak up louder so that we can hear you oh, faster? Sorry, yeah. a terrible hand. Um, two questions about okay. the puffs thing. Um, when you said about the race delineations, mm -hmm. but this guy was uh, Mexican American, mm -hmm. did you not get your face panned in for helping? I mean, did that? W were there certain times when it was okay? Yeah, exactly. That's a very good question. Um, if there's these gang rules about befriending other races, how come I was able to associate with people like Frankie and T-Bone and people like that? Now what happened was I worked my way down from the highest security classification to minimum. In minimum security, everyone's about to get released. The gang rules are really relaxed. So T-Bone could come in my cell and tell me his stories and stuff like that. Now, it depends who's running who the gang leaders are in the living area that you're at. Frankie was classified as a gang leader himself. So he could talk to anyone of any race. He couldn't do certain things with them, but he could get away with pretty much doing whatever he wanted. Because if someone challenged him, he's a guy who's in for murder for hire, you know, he would throw down and stand up for his right to do that. So it all depends upon who you're in your housing quarters are. If you're with some really strict, hardcore early brotherhood guys who don't want you to be around people, you'd better follow that or else. If, especially if you first go in. But over time, you learn your way around the system, you learn your way around the guards, you learn the way around your gang members, and you know, you just figure out how to, to get around these, these things without getting, facing the consequences of it. So, you, you just got to select the, the occasions carefully and stuff like that. Yeah. What was the other question? It was, um did you ever interview the guards and their families, like as how they can live with themselves and the situation they're going into, how they justify? Um, in the jail it was too dangerous to let the guards know what I was doing, but I did try to balance it out a little bit, as, as much as I could actually, by talking to counsellors and guards in the prison system after the jail. I know I put one counsellor's perspective in there, because I, like, I, I feel that the more viewpoints you've got on a subject, the better informed you are to make a decision about something. You know, no, no one's, um, people think they're right about things, but there's just so many other viewpoints out there. So I have tried to put the other side on as well. I've opened my blog now to other prisoners anywhere in the world to post their stories. I've tried to get more female prisoners putting their stories on the internet, because there's very few of those. And I've also told staff members, if they want to put their stories on their um, they're welcome to as well. So the sheer diversity of, of viewpoints I think is in the interest of informing everybody. Okay, at the back. Did you say you put this out in the States in May? Yes, it how, just got how, published. How's it, how's it going? Okay. Right, here's what happened. Um, I was unfortunate in a timing sense. Right, first off, I pulled a trick on Sheriff Joe Arpaio. I sucker punched him. Everyone said this wouldn't work, but I thought I'd give it a, give it a go anyway. Now, in the, in the beginning of the book, before the book starts, it talks, there's like a preface, and it talks about Sheriff Joe Pye being the angel of death of the prison system and all these guards that have murdered prisoners. So I start hitting on him right away. Two pages before that, I signed a copy to him. I said, Sheriff Joe, thank you so much. You know, I'm off the drugs, thanks to your jail conditions. I'm going to schools all over the UK, telling the kids about your jail conditions. It's putting them off drugs. You know, it's all thanks to you in your jail. I really appreciate this. You know, signed, Sean Atwood. Sent him the copy. I'm thinking, all right, let's see what happens. 90% I'm thinking he's not going to acknowledge it. Because like I said earlier, he's famous and I'm a nobody. If he acknowledges me, then that's going to attract attention to me. Which is the hope of the strategy. He must have read that and thought it was Christmas. And not gone any further. <laughs> he scanned it. Put it on his Twitter page on the internet said, I'm on my plane to Washington or such and such a place, reading Sean Atwood's Hard Time. It's, you know, it's so good when uh, one of my prisoners has turned his life around and all this stuff. And I immediately got CNN, CBS, Fox, all emailing me, wanting to do interviews. So I'm thinking, yeah, this is golden. We've done this a few months before the book's coming out. The book's coming out in May. Let's schedule all these interviews.